Good afternoon everyone, it's David Schlothauer here with another detailed Atlantic hurricane season forecast as some of you were asking me really nicely if I was going to make one. So with that being said, we're going to be looking at how active will the Atlantic hurricane season be and why I think it's going to be extremely busy. So to start things off, here's a look at the NOAA Coral Reef Watch sea surface temperatures. These are not your anomalies by any means, these are your actual SSTs and what we we have here is very very warm Atlantic main development region waters take a look at the 26 degree isotherm line which is highlighted here in yellow definitely farther north this April than it was last year at this time and that's because we have had weaker trade winds we have had the El Nino to help that out quite a bit and so therefore the Atlantic is running much warmer than it should be this time of the year. In fact, when we do take a look at your anomalies, this is very, very alarming to see. Look at how deeply orange these anomalies are over the main development region, even into the Caribbean running about a degree to almost three degrees Celsius above average for this time of the year in mid-April. This is not what you typically see until late June, early July, and we're already well ahead of schedule because it's April instead of, say, June or July. And up here, it's definitely cooler than it was last year at this time. So definitely a lot of the heat exchange really building down here in the deep tropics. And this is a signal that really warrants a very busy, hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season of what I'm thinking at this time. And another product that I like to look at is the upper ocean heat content. How much heat is being stored in the ocean below the skin, below the surface of the ocean, right? So this is kind of taking all the energy from deep down into the ocean and giving us these numbers. So we're gonna look at the past five years of sea surface or upper ocean heat content data so we can make some comparisons here of what we are gonna be looking at this season and why I think it's gonna be very active, right? So this is April the 13th, 2019. So literally five years ago today, this is what we were having, right? So definitely on the average to slightly below average side, more like average, right? not very significant amounts of upper ocean heat content in the ocean. But when we go to 2020, I'm just letting you all know, I'm gonna do a comparison on this in a little bit. But this is what gave us 30 plus named storms in the Atlantic Basin, including the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, all right? And this was the 13th of April, 2020, four years ago, right? So let's go now to 2021, right? Not as bad, right? Slightly further south than the previous year. And then even 2022, um, definitely uh, a little further south with this extent here, with the northern uh, leading edge of the axis of all this upper ocean heat content. Again, it's amount of heat that is being stored in the ocean. And then uh, 2023 of last year, it comes up a little bit more, right? We start seeing some yellows over here in the Caribbean, near Jamaica, all right, as well as the Cayman Islands. And then, of course, you have some upper ocean heat content that builds. But this year, I'm telling you all right now, this year is very concerning. Take a look at this. Are you all ready for the comparison? Are you all ready? Here it is. You can see this is actually, no, this is 2020, and then we'll do the comparison because I wanted you to look at this. If this amount of upper ocean heat content gave us 30 plus named storms, what is this going to do? All right, this is 2024, and this was came out yesterday from the University of Miami that makes these maps on a daily basis. Look at the comparison. Now, I'll be honest with you, not as high over the Gulf of Mexico. In fact, the Gulf of Mexico this year is definitely cooler than it was last year at this time. The anomalous is not as significant, but it doesn't take a whole lot of energy to warm up the Gulf in a hurry. So even so, it's not as warm this year doesn't mean it's going to stay that way throughout the hurricane season. And so when we look at this, 
already getting some oranges down here? I mean, come on. We're looking at deep oranges, yellows, all throughout the Caribbean. And that is why some of the climate models are putting out some pretty alarming, crazy numbers of the amount of named storms we could be facing this upcoming Atlantic hurricane season. So now, another way to look at this is the, uh, is the anomalous, okay, throughout the entire globe. And why I use this is we're going to be focusing on El Nino, La Nina, and the Enzo versus what the Atlantic is doing, okay? So this is 2005, okay? And remember how active that season was, a huge ace-producing score that season, right? And look at what the Atlantic looked like back then in April 12th of 2005. Look it up here, really warm. That kind of classic-ish horseshoe Iberian Peninsula current in place while our El Nino or our Enzo over here is neutral to slightly cool in the far eastern Pacific. But take a look at this. This is 2020. What did this give us? 30 plus named storms, right? And you can see barely an El Nino, La Nina-ish, kind of trying to mix bag there this season. And look at the Atlantic, definitely not as warm as what you're about to see, okay? And again, this gave us 30 plus named storms that season. That was one of the busiest Atlantic hurricane seasons ever recorded, okay? And I'm being honest, I'm not hyperbole freaking you all out on this. This is real science with sea surface temperatures. Now that we saw this, what could this bring us? Take a look at this. Watch this. Very, very warm. Look at the comparison. I mean, this is very concerning. Really far above average. In fact, there's a little island here of three degrees Celsius above the long-term average. That is very alarming that is absurd to see and i right now they're barely favorable for tropical cyclones right 26 27 28 degrees celsius but imagining if we remain two to three celsius above average throughout the summer season get these sea surface temperatures out here right around 31 to 32 degrees celsius by the late summer by august and september and boy that's enough heat energy to really get some major hurricanes going especially in the caribbean the western main development region it's this area that we really have to watch for significant tropical cyclones this season and perhaps even the gulf which is still running about one to two degrees celsius above average but nothing like last year where it was running a solid three to almost four degrees celsius above normal cooler this season but still above average while we are still seeing our La Nina developing, which is likely to become moderate to strong by late summer into the fall period during the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. Another way to visualize this is looking at our climate models, okay? This is a forecast. This is not like, oh, this is what's actually going to happen, all right? This could have a lot of issues with it, right? Maybe it doesn't do so well this season, or maybe it does better than what this is showing, right? This is guidance, all right? And this is from the North American Multi-Model Ensemble, or Ensemble, I should say, okay? And anything in green here really disseniates above average rainfall, precipitation. Well, what could that come from? More tropical waves than usual during the month of August through October, okay? This is during the peak of the hurricane season, and yeah, look at what the green covers. It covers Florida and Georgia, including for portions here of Texas, as well as southernmost Louisiana. And this is really where a lot of people live, okay? A lot of people live east, okay, or west of about 50 degrees west in longitude, okay? And all this green really indicates a very busy season, a very active West African monsoon season, the Sahel region likely to get a lot of tropical uh, waves going by the time we go into August, September, and October. And this is for 
Uh, this is from the CanSips model, the Canadian version of the climate model, and also indicating a very busy season. Look at all of this green over here. Very likely to get a lot of named storms out of this season, and they're likely to be confined somewhat in the southwestern Atlantic, in the Caribbean, and the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a look at, uh, that's June, July, and August, and here is August, September, and October. So during the peak, my goodness, this is really dark green down here in the Central Caribbean. So we could have a lot of tropical waves that could have an opportunity of developing into tropical cyclones between the months of August, September, and October. And then, of course, you got the Gulf of Mexico likely to see somewhat above average precipitation anomalies, including for portions of the Central and Southwestern Atlantic and the main development region as the West African monsoon really gets going and the MJO lines up in that favor. Now looking at the climate forecasting system version 2 model, another way to look at this, also indicating a very busy season is upon us by the peak, by August, September, and October. And that's not all. Here's a look at the ECMWF, the European model, okay, and this is for Ju July, August, and September, so roughly kind of covering the early parts of the peak of the hurricane season. Very wet over here in Africa, also really wetter than average, potentially over what we just showed you. The Caribbean, the southwestern Atlantic, the western main development region, and the Gulf of Mexico. When you see all of these models lining up, okay, so let's go back. The North American Multi-Model Ensemble, the CANSIPS, which is a Canadian version, the CFS, and the European all kind of honing in on above average rainfall chances here. That really rings a, a huge alarm, okay? There's going to be a lot of activity. I really think... This season is going to be as bad as 2020. Now, what I just said doesn't mean it has to be, but the models, the climate models, and the signals are all pointing in that general direction that we're going to have an exceptionally busy season, okay? And I want you all to make sure you are ready for that. Now, another forecast we can look at is the number of named storms that the European model is sniffing out in its seasonal forecast guidance. The European model thinks that there could be 21 named storms. That's the entire list of names in the, at least in the alphabet. There are some letters that are missing, of course, right? There's no Z, there's, yeah, there's no Z or X in, in the list of named storms, you know, because they go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So, but 21 named storms will use up the list of names uh, this season, according to the Euro, and the average is 14.2. So we're definitely well up there. And the standard deviation possibly calls out for 30 named storms. Yes, 30 named storms this season, according to the highest end worst case scenario on the European. Some of the members sniffing out 30 plus named storms this season. All right, another thing we got to look at too is the MJO or Madden-Julian oscillation. This is basically a phase diagram of where the upward motion is favored, right? So generally, I'm going to make this as simple as possible, right? Generally, when it's in phases, kind of in phases two, right? In this area, I'm highlighting this. Let me actually get my pen a lot more thicker here. So when it's in phases two, three, and four, typically, that usually favors the Atlantic with a lot of tropical wave activity. Tropical cyclones could be the breeding ground from that. Sometimes, though, we, if, it, if the MJO is more amplified, we could even get it into phase one, and it could even last all the way into phase four, but that doesn't happen very often. It's usually in these these phases here here and here that typically favors and right now the mjo currently is neutral we're not seeing a lot of mjo activity in the forecast but of course this is in april and not in august september or october when this typically gets a lot more active all right so another product that i have released during or for this uh, atlantic hurricane season forecast is 
the ensemble or ensemble system that I have created here. It's called the DS uh, the DS NS. E forecast the David Schlotthauer name storms ensemble or ensemble forecasting system and right now some of the members that I have generated here do indicate we could have 35 name storms only three members do indicate that generally the average right now is about 23 name storms with some members here member 21 only indicating 11 name storms so this is kind of looking at different members and blending the average. And right now we're looking at about 21 to 24 named storms this Atlantic hurricane season, which is well above average versus climatology of just 14.2. Now, a lot of you are wondering how active will this season actually be in terms of named storms, right? So the tropical cyclone risk released their forecast back in January, I believe. They're forecasting 20 named storms. Nine of those will become hurricanes and four of those will become major hurricanes. The Colorado State University predicts 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, four to seven major hurricanes. The University of Arizona predicts 21 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and three to six major hurricanes. And of course, uh, not available or not applicable means they have not released. So the Weather Channel, the UK Met Office has not done anything yet. NOAA has not released their numbers yet. That's why I'll be making a few of these um, seasonal forecasts through um, May because these will come out soon, hopefully. Now, my ensemble forecast calls for 18 to 24 named storms, 9 to 13 hurricanes, and 4 to 8 major hurricanes. And the control run that I've created here is based on one model and one forecast calls for 25 to 30 named storms, 14 to 19 hurricanes, and 5 to 10 major hurricanes. But there's more to this. As I stated just a little bit ago in the video, Colorado State University, Philip Klocksbog, that makes these forecasts as often as he can during the Atlantic hurricane season or before. Again, 23 named storms. The average is 14.4, by the way. I thought it was 14.2, but plus or minus, you know. Uh, but look at this, all right? Uh, we are, he's expecting 11 hurricanes and five major hurricanes. And look at, this is all above average, just by huge margin. And look at the cyclo accumulated cyclone energy. This is basically your production of how active the Atlantic hurricane season really was, right? You could have 30 named storms and still have an ACE score just under 100, right? If they're short-lived hurricanes, they're not particularly strong, you know, and not long-tracked, you know, your ACE score is going to be lower. But what he's saying here is that these hurricanes could not only be intense, but they could be long-lasting and long-tracked, okay? Similar to with what we had with Hurricane Lee, huge ACE producer. So he is forecasting an ACE score of 210, almost double that from an average of 123. 210 doesn't seem very high, but wow. I mean, this could really be a devastating season, folks. I don't like using hyperbole or hyping this up. We've got to be ready. And the A score west of 6 degrees west in longitude could be 125, which is well above average of the 73 in climatology. And the net tropical cyclone activity, which is the raw amount, up to 220 which is higher, which is well above average of the 135, which is the climatology average from 1991 to 2020. So all these numbers really scream out a very busy, potentially a hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season. And we have to be ready here on the YouTube channel because I am going to be providing you guys a lot of updates. I mean, probably every day if necessary, or even two or three videos a day if necessary. If it has to be that way, we'll make it happen. All right, so what will I be presenting during my tropical weather outlooks? Not my routine. Well, my routine as well, but when there's a named storm, we'll do like every day on this, of course. But 
We will be looking at satellite imagery. We will, of course, be looking at the graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center, their cone of uncertainty uh, when they have it out for the Atlantic, um, when we have a named storm to track, right? So you all are prepared as much as we can possible here on the channel. Last year, we saved over potentially a million people's lives because I got my videos out to over a million people. All right, we'll be looking at global models such as GFS, the hurricane models and such. And we will even be digging so far deep into recon data, looking at radar data of what the recon aircraft found, tail Doppler radar missions, and much more. There's more than this, by the way, okay? So what you see here is just a snapshot of what other or what more content I can provide in each of my videos, all right? But anyways, if you did enjoy this Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Forecast for the 2024 season, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media, and I will have another Atlantic Hurricane Seasonal Forecast in early May. You do not want to miss that because we will be looking at what the season holds upon us. Did numbers change? Did they go up or down? We will let you know once I make that video. But until next time, I'll be back with you more with more weather content. Share, like, and subscribe.